talk to through some of these issues about Melania Trump is author and First Lady's documentarian Andrew Oak. Andrew, Election Day is 39 days away. We've seen Melania Trump maybe two or three times. I've never seen anything like this. Where is she? Well, this is, in modern times, very unusual for a first lady not to be out there campaigning. However, it's, it's not historically unprecedented. But most of the time when a first lady didn't go out and campaign and wasn't right out there in front or side by side with her husband, it was in the 1800s. You know, women couldn't even vote. They weren't as, as, uh, 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 they weren't as, as effective to the, to the voters as they are now. And a lot of times that was because a first lady was or wife was older or, or sick. Again, this is in the 1800s, but in modern times, it's it's very uncommon. Yeah, now they can be the most effective surrogate. I mean, you look at Melania or uh, Michelle Obama. I mean, she was the secret weapon. Anytime they really needed a boost, you get her out there and you have to convince her because she's like, okay, let me see, what do I want to do? Because she knew she had some power. Now, in the Fox News interview, the host Ainsley Earhart asked Melania about falling in love with Trump and their origin story. Let me just play it. At that time, he was already known and a celebrity, so it was really nice to be just two of us. Yes. Did you fall in love then? It was a connection. Mm -hmm. It was a connection. Kind of a Charles and Diana answer there, like whatever in love means. You know, a lot of people were wondering, okay, what was this about? What is the nature of Melania and Donald Trump's marriage? Well, of course, the questions were prepared. She would have seen them before and had these answers and coincides with what she writes in her book. As far as the personal relationship between Donald Trump and Melania, only the two of them will know for sure. It's interesting now to see her coming out in support. And she did have a statement, uh, although not a big physical presence when uh, during the two assassination attempts, but she is coming back out to support her husband in a way that I think that coincides with the book, which will also kind of explain away her privacy and wanting to be more private. Now she's ready to tell her story. Now she's going to come out and support her husband on the campaign trail for whatever good that will do in this crunch time and as we lead up, you know, this few days away from the election as we are. Yeah, the last month or so. Uh, speaking of privacy, uh, last week, Melania Trump tweeted a defense of her own nude modeling. It was a uh, pre-produced video. It wasn't just, you know, like, I just wanted to get on here and say this. It was whole pre-produced and had, you know, hi historic artwork and things like that. And, you know, she clearly wanted to speak about this and, and make a whole video statement about it a few weeks before the election. Any historic parallels for something like that? Uh, sure, a, a little bit. Again, this goes this goes far back. If she was not a, a, a high fashion supermodel from Europe, I, I would say that this was a little unusual. But it's it's not you know scantily clad, and some of the photography that she did falls in line with her job. And as she explains in her book and talks about coming over to the United States, she never could have imagined she would have been first lady. Most of these women couldn't and wouldn't. Um, I know that uh, John Tyler's second wife, Julia, got a lot of flack for appearing in a, in a dress at, at, uh, on, a, on an ad for a Long Island grocery store. And she caught a lot of flack for that in the 1800s. Really? Again, you know, if... Yeah, it, it's it's funny when you go back and compare and contrast, which is what I do, you know, the, the societal norms change, what's acceptable and unacceptable changes. But, you know, I mean, I'm, it's it's personal taste of, of, of what you consider to be off color or, or, or blue work or things like that. But from a European supermodel appearing in, in the magazines and doing the things that she did, it, it's not that out uh -huh. far, that far out of the realm. And again, when she did it, she could have had no idea that she would have ended up to be the first lady at the time. I'm going to Google first lady grocery store dress um, and, and look into that. Or I'll read your book. Yeah. Okay. Um, do, do Americans view Melania Trump differently than other first ladies, I wonder? Because we wanted to see Michelle Obama gardening. Yeah. We wanted to see Laura Bush reading, you know, the librarian. But Melania just kind of comes and goes, disappears, then comes out with videos and ornaments. And do, is she held to a different standard? I don't know that she's held to a different standard, but the American people are very fickle, and we have to remember that these are human beings. Some of them gravitate towards the spotlight and the public stage, and some do not. 
Um, you know, Bess Truman was highly criticized in the 1950s uh, mm -hmm. uh, for, for not coming out and not being a public first lady. But she was highly effective and one of her husband's closest confidants behind the scenes. And she just didn't like the spotlight. She didn't like being in public. And again, thinking back to Melania's career as a supermodel, one might think, well, she loves the spotlight. Well, you know, when you're a supermodel, it's literally the definition of sit there and look pretty. They're, they're not really interviewed that often or, or weren't, you know, more and more as we expand our, our awareness of, of women and women in the work world and women's leadership and all of the things that these first ladies are. But, you know, Melania Trump wasn't part of a lot of live interviews. English is not her first language, not c completely comfortable with it, maybe a little self-conscious. So, you know, the public spotlight was just not for her. Uh, Pat Nixon, another modern day first lady that wanted to do more behind the scenes than out in front of the public. And it's just whatever leads to their, you know, we Michelle Obama, wildly popular, Laura Bush, wildly popular, Hillary Clinton, wildly popular. They almost embraced embraced the uh, spotlight. But even Michelle Obama, when she got out of the White House, said, you know, I just wanted some days to walk out and go skydiving or ride a motorcycle or something. You know, the, the microscope that these women are put under in an unpaid and unelected job for what we critique them and expect out of them is, is pretty fantastic. Look at that. A defense attorney, basically, for first ladies, and you've gone into all of their histories. And yeah, I guess you do. You have the Ladybirds, you have the Pat Nixons, and very soon we might have our first gentleman. So we might have to expand your title here, author and first ladies, maybe gentlemen, documentarian. Andrew Oak, good to chat. Absolutely. Yeah, and look at what Doug Emhoff, you know, he's out campaigning like a crazy man and is doing great things for he's his wife's there. numbers, you know. Some people gravitate to that, some people take advantage of that, and, and some people don't. But I think we'll see a little bit more or a lot more in comparison to what we haven't seen of Melania leading yeah, on up the to right. this point. Yeah. All right, head on the race. Uh, we're gonna